Hi everyone, I am Demi Thibault and I am so excited about having a conversation um, with a pretty inspirational woman today, Francine Rivers. Uh, if you guys have not read Redeeming Love, the book or seen the movie that just recently uh, got launched, you're missing out. Um, it was an, a very, very impactful movie. Uh, Francine, thank you so much for joining me today. I, um, I can't even begin to tell you how much I have personally been impacted by the story, by the, by the movie that you created. And you know what, you guys, Francine and I actually feel, I felt like I wanted to have this conversation just because I feel like we actually have so much in common um, or actually share a heart for, for quite a few things. And, and one of them being loving God and loving people. Um, Francine, I feel like this book, this movie embodies that in so many beautiful ways. Um, and secondly, our love for South Africa. I mean, the whole movie was yes. filmed basically here in my home country where I'm actually doing this uh, recording from right now. So Francine, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm so excited to, to just be here with you today. That's a pleasure to talk to you. Francine, I mean, um, this, this book have really, Redeeming Love, the book, have really like stood the test of time. I mean, if we just jump right into it, you wrote this book pretty much 30 years ago and 30 years later, it gets turned into a movie. Can you just explain to me how special that was? What was that process like? Was that something that you kind of dreamt of all along um, or how did that even happen? Uh, I really didn't dream about it being a movie. And when I originally wrote it, I didn't know the connection with sex trafficking, for one thing. I wrote it as a statement of faith because I'd worked in the general market for a number of years writing steamy historical romances. And when I became a Christian, God just kind of cut that off. I couldn't write anything that made any sense. And I think that what he was saying to me is that, you know, I had made writing an idol in my life. And so he was removing it. And that gave me a chance to just read the Bible over and over again until I was falling in love with Jesus. And I didn't care if I ever wrote again. We were doing a home Bible study with our pastor, uh, inviting people in. And we came to the Minor Prophets. And when we hit the book of Hosea, that just broke me open. And I felt like God was just saying to me, this is the love story I want you to write. You've been writing these love stories over here, but this is the real thing. So it, for me, it was just to show, you know, that I'd been kind of like Gomer, always looking to other things instead of looking to God. And I didn't make that connection wow. until people started reading it. And then they would write me their life stories of what they'd been through. And it was like, oh, my goodness. Um, it really was a, a learning experience, kind of shocking uh, to know that so many people had been through such horrendous experiences that like, were connected with Angel. And they would feel like, you know, they were looking for somebody like Michael. And of course, they they understood that it was God. There are right. a lot of people that don't, but there are a lot of people that really make that connection that this is an allegory about Jesus. So. Right. I think one of the things that I love so much about the story, obviously, it has a biblical connection um, with the book of Hosea. But one of the things that I love so much about, um, if we just, just refer to the movie, right, is... Yeah how relatable the movie is in so many different ways, right? Maybe you don't have a family member or someone that you know that has been trapped in this terrible evil of human trafficking, but we all have that longing for a redemption in a relationship or that redemption in a friendship or, um, you know, maybe that redemption with your relationship with your maker. And I think that was one of the things that really stood out to me Yes, there was a very specific storyline um, that was based on specific happenings, right, in, in, in Angel's life, in the main character's life. But to me, the movie was so relatable in so many other ways. And it, it kind of had a small glimpse of the way that Michael loved Angel. To me, was just a small glimpse of the way that the God of this universe, our maker, loves us just a tiny example. And I thought it was just so, so beautifully portrayed, portrayed. So it definitely resonated with me in such a big way. Well, I know that people had approached us about making a movie, you know, years ago. And it seemed like every time I'd read a script, I luckily I had a lawyer that made sure I had a, approval, you know, creative approval. <laughs> and they, they did not understand Michael. And it was usually, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say, it's 
script written by a man. So they, they had a whole different slant to who Michael was. So when I started working with Cindy Bond, I thought, you know, I just want to write an example script to show what I'm looking for. And I never expected them to actually, you know, buy that script. And then working with DJ Caruso, we collaborated on it because I wrote it as a linear story the way it is in the book, just straight through. And that would be really hard to see on screen to get that whole backstory up front. Uh, so he restructured and then we worked together to strengthen scenes. You can't have God speaking out of thin air. People wouldn't understand that. So how do you show mm -hmm. God in the center of it all the way through the book? Uh, so it was quite a challenge, but really I, it has all the major scenes in it that I, I know that uh, book fans were looking for. And I wanted to be sure that it was true to the book. So. I would love to, speaking of, uh, of scripts, I would love to understand how much it, I, I can tell that the, this is obviously so, so near and dear to your heart and something that you are so passionate about. And I can only imagine that you want it to be hands on. I know we only just met for the first time, but can you run us through a little bit? How, how involved were you actually in the process of making this movie? Well, I, I was very involved because I even got in, from writing the script to working with Cindy and seeing the, the auditions, which were really, really something. I'd never seen auditions before, but um, we knew right away who Angel was. When we saw Abigail Cohen, she just fit so perfectly. And I think she wrote a, a letter to DJ because she really wanted the, the role of Angel and really pursued it. But she just personified my image of, of Angel. Finding, <laughs> finding Michael was a real challenge. We watched so many auditions. It was actually, actually DJ that discovered Tom Lewis in England and wow. went saw him there and did an audition there. But um, we needed a young man that could be innocent, could play innocent. And there aren't a lot of actors that can do that. And also just to have all the different nuances of emotion uh, in his face. He's classically trained in England and just a very, very talented young actor. So that was- I'm um, not much uh... I'm not much of a movie expert per se, but I will tell you that when I first watched the movie, I just thought to myself, wow, these characters fit so perfectly into their role. So that was different from my little bit of expertise. So well yeah. done. And I felt like they portrayed the characters so extremely well. Another little just side note, I would, I'm so I'm just curious, where did the characters' names come from? Obviously, Michael Hosea, Hosea based on, on the book in the Bible, but the Michael and Angel, how did you come to those specific names? Well, if, oh golly, it's 30 years ago, but I know, I know when, I, when I look back at the book now, I think, how did I ever get away with having all the A last names? Because you really aren't supposed to do that. They're supposed to be a lot different. But I wanted them to be somewhat biblically based because Paul, I'm thinking of Saul of Tarsus and how he had his Damascus Road experience. So people that are familiar with the Bible are going to are gonna know Paul is going to have to have some kind of experience that he has his own redemption story. Uh, and Miriam, uh, just the whole idea of Miriam. And then um, it was trying that at the end, it was important to have her name be Sarah at the end, because Sarah, of course, was a barren woman in the Bible. And she mm -hmm. had Isaac. So that's right. to show that she will have children. God will make sure she has children. Right. So there were um, sort of the roles that they were playing in the, in the stories, in the story. That, thank you so much for sharing. Just Yeah, it's just always so great getting that little bit of, um, of information straight from, from you, Francine. Last bit of curious information, and then I'd love to tell you um, something a little bit deeper um, that is the fight against human trafficking. But you have to tell me, I mean, I have to ask, why South Africa? How were we so lucky to have this movie filmed right here in my backyard? Well, we looked all around the U.S., but you can build anything you really need to build in South Africa. So they built the entire town of Paradise. They built a beautiful chapel. And I think that set is going to stay there. And the, just the gorgeous setting. There's one scene in the movie that I just love, and I don't know what they call it, but it's where the, the clouds just roll over the mountains down yes. near the ape. Gorgeous. Yes. And that's 
And I actually think that is that the Cape of Good Hope, the um, where the Twelve Apostles is based. But potentially, we actually the, so Table Mountain, um, which is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. We actually always joke because Table Mountain always has a cloud over it, and we call it the tablecloth. So, um, so maybe that was some of the some of the. The, the clouds that were incorporated but yes obviously so beautiful I'm biased of course how could I not be and just so ironic that we're having this conversation when I am actually sitting right here in South Africa um not too far from where I believe the film was was filmed so yeah. really well, and it's, it's very much like Northern California because it's got the vineyards there the beautiful mountains it's uh just, just a gorgeous area yeah we it really, really enjoyed it there were you able to attend a, a lot, a big part of the filming here in South Africa? We were there for about two and a half weeks. So we were able to watch uh, how they make a film. But, uh, you know, when it gets to that point, it's really all in DJ's hands. So I was just there to kind of watch and, and be a fly on the wall, so to speak, to watch how it's all done and then meet the crew. We got to meet the crew and the other actors. So that was really fun. And then uh, we kept waiting for the books because I wanted to give books to the crew and the, and the cast. Um, and we got them just before we had to leave country. And oh, I was able to find them and give them, on, give them to everybody before we had to go to the wow. airport. So. That is special. I'm sure that shipping takes a minute because that's a pretty hefty, yeah. hefty few pages. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, well, so much to encapsulate in, in you know, such a little time frame, um, you know, of just a movie. So I cannot, I cannot even imagine the challenges that you guys had to face. I'm just trying to get the whole message through, but I felt like you, you guys could not have, you know, done that any, any better. But Francine, I think something that, um, you know, that we both have a really deep passion for, I actually, my husband and I just just ended up in South Africa after finishing um, a five country tour um, up in, in Africa where we actually just opened a safe home with one of our ministry partners in Uganda. It's called the Tibo, um, the Tibo Koa Philippi campus. And it's a safe home for women that have been trafficked. And, uh, you know, for us, it was such a special time. We actually had a conversation this morning upon, upon my parents and, and my husband. And they were like, how can you describe a perfect day? And I actually told them that day that we were in Uganda and I got to meet one of the survivors. Her name is Mimi and she's okay with us sharing her story, of course. Um, getting to meet her face to face, getting to give her a hug was just one of the uh, moments that I will probably cherish, uh, you know, for the rest of my life. She was trapped in um, a banana plantation chased by a cannibal. She got sold to a cannibal. And there's, of course, so many different forms of human trafficking. Um, and something like cannibalism is one of them that, you know, we don't even think of every single day. So the fight against human trafficking is something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's actually something that for me personally, started a couple of years ago when I got uh, stopped at a red traffic light surrounded by five armed men. I tried to run away and the moment I tried running away, I got grabbed and pushed back into the vehicle. You know, the guy on my side of the vehicle yelled something like, get in, you're going with us. And long story short, I managed to escape that situation by remembering things that I was taught in a woman empowerment class in a safety driving course that my dad forced me to go on before I was allowed to drive by myself and I never ever ever want to victimize myself um, and I don't know what the intentions true intentions were of uh, the perpetrators that you know attacked me but I do know that that incident serves as a catalyst in my life to learning about something that I did not know existed in the year 2020, uh, 2017 at the time, and God really used that mess in my life, that trial in my life, and turned it into a triumph for his glory um, that I will forever be thankful for. But that is really what served as my catalyst, what opened my eyes to the very harsh and real reality of an estimated 40.3 million people that are trapped in human trafficking around the world. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm so committed alongside my husband, alongside the, the Tim Tebow Foundation um, to do everything that I personally can to be a voice for as many women as possible to 
help create a safe space for as many women as possible. And so I would love to just learn a little bit more about where your heart um, for the fight against human trafficking stemmed from. Well, one of the things that um, made me realize what was going on is I was invited to the International Conference on Prostitution. And I remember asking Nita Bells as one of our board members on uh, the Redeeming Love Sanctuary Foundation that came out of the movie, but that I, I thought, well, what, I don't know anything about this. Why would they even ask me to come? And she said, you don't have any idea how Redeeming Love is used in ministry around the world to reach people that you know, need to know that God loves them no matter what. Um, but I think the main thing for me is we knew right from the beginning that redeeming love is really our first fruits, um, for me as a Christian. So we've always given the proceeds away after paying taxes. Um, but we, I wanted to focus it. So Holly Caruso, DJ's wife came up with an idea of starting a foundation and we kind of discussed, should we have a ministry, you know, like a home, like you're talking about where you have a shelter but I had been uh, involved enough that I knew it, there was a huge learning curve to know how to do that kind of thing. And I thought we could be more effective by coming alongside ministries that are on the front lines that have experience to have a track record and give grants for their programs to help them that way. So that's basically what we're trying to do with the Redeeming Love Sanctuary Foundation. And it, um, you know, any money that I would make out of the movie would go into that. Any money that I make out of the book goes into that. So it's just to try to help, you know, in some way. You feel like, you know, as a person by yourself, you can't, there's not a lot you can do. But when we go, when we get together, we can do quite a bit. That so is that. so, so true. I love what you say about coming alongside one another. And that is something yeah. that, we believe so much in as well as having those strategic partnerships because you know what we're all in this fight together we are all fighting towards the same um, we all have the same mission fighting towards the same goal and why do we all have to go and reinvent the wheel when we can come alongside one another like you said and support one another so so I love that and Francine you know what I, I actually resonate with that to myself because for such a long time I felt like oh Demi if you really want to make a difference you need to start you know per se your own foundation or um, build your own home or something to yeah. that extent I, I always felt so much pressure to have to do that on on my own um, if I want to really make a difference until I realized um, that, you know, what God can use you where you are with what you've got, with where you're standing, as long as you're willing. And Francine, I mean, how beautiful is that, that he has literally used Redeeming Love, the book, before you ever even intended for him to use it for ministry purposes. Um, so just how amazing is our God? That's really, it's really exciting. I was thinking, you know, like with your Freedom Fridays, you can really teach a lot of the young girls about the, the way they can be groomed online and what they need to watch out for. I think that's a really valuable tool you have there. And I'd like to hear about your rescue team. Yeah, well, thank you so much for asking. Um, you know, Francine, I think we live in a very digitalized day and age, as we all know, and something that's so, so near and dear to my heart is, is, you know, spreading the word to young girls out there that is using social media. People think that, you know, just because you have a few followers, you don't necessarily have a big platform, but we all have a platform and we can all make a difference. Um, literally, like I said earlier, God can use you with where you are, where you're standing, with what you've got, but be careful because he will use you, right? Um, yeah. And so one of the things that, that the Tintiwa Foundation wanted to do was to empower people um, that believes in this mission, that believes in this fight with practical tools um, on how to come alongside us in this fight. And so we set up a rescue team where people can sign up and they can sign up in multiple, multiple ways, one to be an advocate. So we help teach people uh, about the fight against human trafficking, about the realities of human trafficking, because I think there's so much power in knowledge. Um, Francine, I don't know about you, but so many times I get into a conversation with someone and they tell me, no, you're kidding me. This is not real. This is not happening today. But then we look at the numbers and the statistics and it's absolutely staggering. And those statistics are real, right? So um, so that is one way. There's another way that people can sign up. It's by being a, a prayer warrior, by coming alongside and praying. Um, and Francine, one of the one of the ways that the Tintivo Foundation 
And that's kind of a side of the rescue mission is we believe in creating strong families. You know, we saw in the movie where Angel is a little girl. Her, she lost her mom. That was her only parent. And she became vulnerable and she fell into the traps of evil people's hands. And so part of the Tim Tebow, Fund, Tim Tebow Foundation's goals is to help create strong families. And so here in South Africa, just uh, earlier last week, um, one of our ministry partners is Impact Africa. And what they do is they go around just the area of Johannesburg where they educate um, and empower about 500 to 700 pregnant moms just every week on how to best take care of your fam of your baby that you're about to um, you know, bring into the world. And there's so many other ways, um, but you can hear, I mean, I get chills. We're clearly very passionate about what we get to do. Um, and I kind of even forgot the question that you asked, but you know what, there's many ways that people can, can, can become involved, can help make a difference. And I know that by one of the ways is simply by reading your book, Redeeming Love, or by watching the movie, as you shared, so many of the proceeds go towards the fight against human trafficking. So um, you know what, I, I, I think that is really inspirational and for everyone watching this, there's, you know, whether that's the Tim Tebow Foundation, whether that's Redeeming uh, Love Sanctuary Foundation, or whether that's another organization out there that you resonate with, get involved, stand up, do something, use what you have, where you are, God's going to use you with what you've got. Yeah, that's so true. You know, I, the, one of the hopes I had for the movie is that people would um, take friends to it. And it would be a way to, to open a conversation about what's happening, but also about faith, you know, just to talk about what it means to, to not be judged by your past and not yeah. let your past define you, that you can, you can have a whole new life in Christ and he can use you. And the, in the story of Angel, she's got her ministry at the end. It's the people that are the survivors can have tremendous impact on the other people that are caught they have a, they can have that conversation that exactly. will really, be, really resonate and be understood correct that is so true the the lady that i mentioned earlier mimi that i got to meet in uganda just a couple of weeks ago she is now a, a a leader at the safe home that you know provided restoration and care for her and she's now on the way of opening on on uh, becoming a business owner and opening up her own hair salon that's always been her dream and i i love that angel also has her own ministry um yeah. so yes definitely such a such a great um just way of you know there's so much good that can come from that and i always say that a estimated 40.3 million people around the world that is trapped in trafficking seems absolutely overwhelming. And how do you even begin to make a dent in that number? You yeah. begin by by reaching one person, by mm -hmm. one angel, by one Mimi. And, um, you know, to me, that is so inspiring and so motivating um, to go for the next Mimi and the next angel. Yeah. Absolutely. Francine, thank you so, so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you a little bit better um, and learning more about Redeeming Love, the book and the movie. Um, I, I've loved this conversation. How can people stay uh, in touch and see what the work that Redeeming Love uh, Sanctuary Foundation is doing? Is there a way for people to, to reach out or stay connected? We have a website, finally. We got it up. It's www.redeeminglovesanctuary.org. And there will be information of our mission and what, we, what we're trying to do and also applications to apply for grants. And there will also be testimonies. Uh, at, we're just brand new, so I think we've only done five grants so far. But the stories of those things will be put online so that people can see them. Thank you. Well, that is awesome. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for using your work um, as a ministry. So uh, I, I, as a woman, I appreciate that so much. Um, I've been so impacted by Redeeming Love, the movie, um, and so impacted uh, for the way that you have used this movie to create impact, uh, real life-changing impact in, in people's lives. So thank you so much for taking the time to have a conversation with me today. It was a pleasure and keep up your good work too. Thank you, Francine. All the best.